Greetings, Earthlings! Welcome back to my channel, the only Lauren channel. I decided to put the camera on this side so you guys can see me better. Oh, is there a lot of noise? Okay, so I fixed it. So today we're going to be talking about the true source of your anxiety and depression. It's the collective unconscious. And this is my personal research. We're going to get into the study. I'm going to talk about it. And also, too, I just want to say, um, although I'm teaching you guys, I wanted to get back to the channel's original purpose, which was me basically sharing my ideas with you, my new discoveries and everything, which I still basically do, but I feel like I'm less passionate about it, and I'm still teaching you guys things, but I'm not teaching you on the same level. When I first started in 2018, the end of 2018, December, I was like, oh, I have all these new ideas, all these new discoveries, and I don't really have anyone to talk to this, uh, talk with it about. So let me, you know, express my ideas to you guys and then, you know, share some things and maybe you have something to communicate back to me that might actually be, um, like, useful for yourself and for me and then, like, the world community as, as in general. So... Also, too, it had a very, um, I've been using less etymology, even though I've been meaning the etymo etymological sources and mathematical stamps. I obviously don't have my whiteboard here or anything like that, or I haven't had my whiteboard in a minute. And then within those findings, a couple of weeks ago, I actually just realized that etymology is basically calculus because of integrals and because of derivatives. An integral is an integrated word, which is a word made up of many contexts, many prefixes, sub, and everything. The exponent, the exponential word, to the such and such power. And a derivative is a word that in which is derived. The root word, like we say in calculus, plus C. And, and that's just a little, tip of the iceberg type thing you know I hope that's making sense to you because it makes sense to me but you know I hope I'm explaining it right basically stripping a word away and integrating words okay for example okay prestigious and fame are the same but someone could be prestigious someone could be famous and not prestigious because prestigious means also like a type like a laureate a noble laureate and fame by itself could just mean famous it also doesn't have to mean rich and it doesn't also have to mean prestigious so that's what i mean by exponential integral versus derivative that means i think the fame would be like the derivative and then prestigious would be the integral and then rich and famous but rich and famous is a separate one you know what i mean you know what, you know what i'm trying to say so let's get down to what let's get down to what the etymology of anxiety and depression really is anxiety is apprehension caused by danger misfortune of error or error or restless dread of some people like, oh my god i'm anxious i don't know what's gonna happen anguish anxiety solicitude uneasiness troubled in the mind be rocking with some ariana grande Basically, from the adjective English, which you don't, if you don't know adjectives, they are descriptive words. Also, figuratively, to torment, to cause distress. From the Pi, ang, meaning tight, painful, restricted, painful. Like, not when you're ready, that's anxiety. 
I wanted to interject too what I find out side note for my notes is that um, when you have knots in the body that's actually energy and that energy is stored in your body as herbs so technically you don't need coffee but I got up this morning I had coffee I really am wanting to get off of coffee because I already have energy stored in my body in the form of herbs aka knots but it's okay because you just you know massage them out not with it that's dis-ease and discomfort inequity inequity no longer balance that's what ugliness is you know someone has is uh, someone is ugly they have this inequity that's what the you know the bible was talking about inequity i'm, I'm going off on a tangent oh, no. But I went, I went in equity of any kind. Um, it was another a guy. It was with a man. Think in equity. That's what will happen to us. So then, what are we saying? We are in. I uh, hope you guys can hear me. So basically, we're in a state of micro anger. Micro anger. So when I'm anxious about something, it's best to step into it. It's best to get rid of that fear. So then, what is depression? We're doing a term, it's actually a term from astronomy, who would know? I mean, I know we use it, but you know, I never thought like, oh my God, like depression, astronomy. I think of depression like a black hole gravity, when I think of it, but the tech, the astronomical definition of it is an angular distance of a star below the horizon. So, if you don't know where the horizon is, that's where the, the earth meets the sky. So, imagine this being the sky and this being the earth. Do not in split the horizon. Out of the island. Wait. Out of the island into the height of play. Past the places where you used to go. Never been known this But you still had a face Echo the angel Won't be seen So depressed means to Put down force or conquer Are you really gonna let life conquer you? Okay, so press down, lower, also. The prefix of D means down, down from, from, and off, or as the current kids say today, down bad. <laughs> so D, the prefix D, plus the near part of the, or pre premier part of means suppress, hold back, cover, crowd, and compress. From the pie root to strike. Oh my god, I have superpowers. No? Okay, just that once, because it was impromptu. But I did say to strike. No? Okay. Okay. I should have some powers. Okay, but the per and premier are all forms of afford paramount fret privy proof and prowess. Um and I feel like that has some deeper meaning, but I didn't actually see it this time. I didn't look and like, oh you know, I didn't make those immediate connections like I would sometimes. So, you know, it happens. Good day is that day. So now that we have a deeper understanding of anxiety and depression and what it all really means, let's talk about where it's coming from, right? Because it's not just this modern day take of being the best version version of your highest self as far as getting rid of your anxiety and depression so 
for the past two three years i have been hazed and severely traumatized basically i was gonna ignore the hazing and move around and about or about like i normally would for any type of dramatic dra dramatization because you know to kind of go without saying that filthy people will do filthy things but then people kept insisting that i felt the pain of the haze of the haze so then i was like okay sure you know what i'm a human you know what might as well go through this emotional pain and i went Ugh, i'm hurt Ugh. So then I picked myself back up again and I carried on, right? Cause like, who cares? And then individuals were like, don't you feel the emotional pain? And I was like, what a crisis. And then I was like, I'm sure, but you know, um, you know, like, but what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? So, you know. I'm telling you how I figured it out, out through my personal okay. So then, when, so basically, you know, they wouldn't shut the hell up. I like, they being annoying. And then it occurred to me that, maybe these were messages in the form of from, from the collective unconscious in the form of prayers. That would imply that I'm God. But humans are supposed to be made in the image of God. I will go further into this. Even in physics, we're all connected to each other. And I will, that's another video for another time. Basically, basically, I'm struggling, or my people are struggling. We have people who are suffering. There are cries and call there are calls for help to us. Us other humans. Most people are so basic that they never are called to action unless something significant in their relationships have happened to them where they say, Okay, I need to make a difference and a change in my life not just in others right i kind of did this too because a lot of times they'll say oh i don't i always know that i can i've always had humanitarian causes but i've never uh, i'll kind of be like sometimes like hey you know that's not my issue that's not my problem to certain things especially when it comes to control um i digress let's get into it i'm just giving an example for example so the relationship catalyst is what happens for them to change and basically to answer the call. Being a call. Ghostbusters. <laughs> and then they start to gather that realization and they start to become a greater person, a better person for themselves and for humanity. Especially in our culture where, you know, People are just working nine to fives or doing nothing at all. I'm gonna say doing nothing at all. But they don't have a greater higher purpose. Okay, so when you come from privilege or position of help, you know, just like Jesus came down, you know, he was the king in the heaven, and then he was like, you know what, I'm gonna help these people. But he, when he got here, he was like, ooh, these are scallywags. I know he was disappointed. We're in the position to do something about it. Basically, we're all connected together. His pain is her pain. So when you're feeling this unusual, unreasonable pain, you're like, why are people acting unreasonable? It's a collective unconsciousness of us asking each other for help. The earth asking each other for help. Like I told you, I swear the river cried out for me. They was like, Lauren, what, what happened? And then, you know, I had to say something immediately because that's not necessarily action. 
but it's still acknowledging it and I hope to in the future be able to put my words into action I already have my little project but you know what I'm um, I can't say whether we should be fixing the problem from top to bottom or bottom to top and when I say bottom to top should we go over there in order if we go to other places does fixing them fix us or should we fix ourselves first and then go over there but you can't really tell the difference or fix our relationships first but what I will say as a rising, it starts from the home and obviously for a cancer rising home is me so I'm gonna tell you what Michael Jackson said look at the man in the mirror and you already need to do that so what I can say is but what actually this is what I will say but I think the real solution is is because we have a lot of this uh, dopamine from the depression, we need a lot of hits, we got a lot of ADHD, we got a lot of, um, you know, all of these things in our head. So what we do, we need is a little bit of everything. So we got a little, little bit of working on us, you know, looking good and all of that, a little bit of having fun, a little bit of love, relationships, Helping other people in the community, um, singing songs, reaching out, and if we do a little bit of each of these things, let's just call it the 12, no, I don't know, if we do a little bit of each of those, then we can cure our anxiety and depression. Like right now, with me, I was like, I'm, I've been so focused like helping my cause but like for right now my special mission is to go out and have fun so I'm really I feel very blessed to have that in my life right now but let me know what you think in the comments on curing anxiety and depression or what else possible source I am so sure that because we are collective and we are one that it's all coming from all of us so that's what I suspect via my own research because when you're hit with waves like that, you know, when I think of collective unconscious, they talk about Pisces, but I don't think of Pisces as like this big ocean necessarily. Like people say, you think about waves, water, the coming waves, and that's basically how I derive that. I forgot what I was going to say, but like this video and share and wait no um subscribe subscribe is really what i mean and then share it with your friends and buy my book quintessence on amazon goodbye airplane you know i'm about to head to the